Many of us dream of sailing the world, but only few like explorer Pat Evans truly make it happen. Pat's biggest adventure has been the one within, a journey to stay true to herself and her adventuring spirit. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Lisa. How are you? I'm fantastic. Nice oh, cool. to meet you, Dick. Come on board. This is the coolest thing to meet somebody on her boat. <laughs> Monaco. The reason for stop knot is so that it doesn't run through that little pulley over there. Okay. Now this is a figure of eight knots. You go around the back and then through there and you pull it and make it tight. There you go. Okay. I was conceived in Kenya. My father told me that in Mombasa during the Second World War. He looked out and he saw a yacht, and he said, one day, I am going to build a yacht and sail around the world. And then he made me, so obviously I was going to be very adventurous. When I was born, my mom burst into tears. She actually told me this. They'd had two girls, waited five years, made me. And I think after that, I was daddy's little boy. We used to go fishing together. We did everything that a dad and a son would have done until he realized that I wasn't a boy anymore. And I noticed there was a slight shift in the relationship, which was very, very distressing for me. I think my mother was the one who brought in the love because my dad was a pucker old Victorian English gentleman, but my mother was very caring. I enjoyed my teens tremendously. I discovered yachting and boys. So, of course, then it was bop parties and lots of dancing. When she finished school, Pat was invited to sail the world with her father, who'd realized his lifelong dream to build a yacht and explore the globe. It was a life-changing experience for Pat and an extraordinary opportunity for the young adventurer. Father and daughter together, exploring new places and giving expression to Pat's innate sense of adventure. I went sailing with my dad for two and a half years of the three and a half years that the boat was away. That was such an amazing trip. Today, you can see where you're going to go. You just Google and you can see. There, it was like a new picture every time. Everything was fresh, it was beautiful. Over here we have a picture of my daddy's yacht. She's called Corsair. What route did you take? We went up the uh, Atlantic all the way through to the Mediterranean and then crossed over to the Pacific over the Atlantic Ocean again. She is the first South African built yacht to sail around the world. Sailing with my dad wasn't all that easy, to tell you the truth. Being a Victorian sort of person, he was always pretty skeptical about what I said and how I did things. I was always wanting to please him. But it was a very special experience. Pat's time spent on the boat created a deep connection with the sea and sailing, something she's embraced her entire life, along with the special friendships that it's brought. It was always very hurtful for her that her father, in a way, she felt never really accepted her in the way she would have liked him to, or admired her in the way that she would have liked him to admire her. I got on very well with her father, but he was a very traditional man. When she came home, Pat moved to Pretoria to study Afrikaans and photography. It was time to make a life on land and choices about her future. The years of freedom on the high seas couldn't last forever. In Pretoria, whilst I was learning to be a photographer and working as a photographer, I met my husband-to-be. He was a farmer. He introduced me to farming and I loved it. Eventually we moved to Underberg in the Darkensburg foothills with a backdrop sometimes in winter of 
ice and snow on the mountains. We turned it into quite a successful dairy. We had 200 cows. Over here, I've got pictures of my girls. Oh, yeah. Aren't they lovely? Look at this. This is your daughter, but it could have been you. And that's Barbara, and we're actually sailing on my dad's yacht at the time. This is Jackie, and that's Barbara, and they're kissing each other. Isn't that so cute? Being a mother and a farmer fed Pat's spirit, but the marriage was troubled and began to cause her great pain. He didn't appreciate me. I think that's the worst thing, is not to be appreciated when you've really worked hard and done a good job. I started becoming depressed in, in the marriage. I took a full scrap page, drew a line down the middle, and then pros in staying in the marriage and pros for getting out of the marriage. The list on the left-hand side for staying in the marriage went down all the little lines to the very bottom, from the calves need me, the cows do well with me, and what a lovely place to bring up the children. They used to go walking with me, although they were just little toddlers. It was lovely. And then on the other side, I was quite shocked. I wrote my mental sanity and the ultimate happiness of my children because they were starting to be disturbed from our arguing. Do you remember the moment when you decided that you were going to leave? The phone rang and there was a man on the other side of the line who said, is your farm for sale? And I heard myself say, yes. And you leapt into the big unknown. I was pretty scared of the reaction that my parents were going to have. It was much worse than, than I could have envisioned. There was a situation for three months, my father ignored me totally. He wouldn't speak to me. It doesn't matter what I said to him, he wouldn't reply to me. So it was very difficult. The father, being a very traditional man, would believe that one would stay in a marriage no matter how desperate or how awful it was, simply because one had made those vows. And I think he expected that of Pat. And of course, it wasn't something she could do. I really, really, really didn't want to leave, but I was so unhappy. Adventurer Pat Evans left an unhappy marriage and life on a farm she helped build to set up home in Cape Town with her three small children. Her decision was not received well by those around her, but she leapt into the great unknown with very little support at a time when divorce and single motherhood was taboo. It's a big world out there. You don't know where you're going. It's the fear, the fear of what you don't know. Being on one's own with three children Despite the fact that I had a small amount of income coming in every month, it wasn't sufficient. I rented a little place, and it was a time that I thought, no, I've got to make more money. I did an estate agent's course, and out of necessity, I sold property. And I used my photography for making a little bit of pocket money as well. It was tough, but it was such a relief actually being able to be myself again. Just being alone with the children was stunning. We bought a very second-hand combi and we started adventuring again. So what was it like having all these adventures with your mom as you grew up? It was fabulous. We used to go on these magnificent journeys, go to Longabond, sail, windsurf, and it was just a childhood of adventure. You can see how we used to go on holidays, and we used to sleep out virtually under canvas. It was amazing. And here we are teaching my daughters to sail the Hobie Cat. One of my first images of Pat is on her windsurfer, sort of windsurfing up in Langabond Lagoon. 
I thought she was wonderfully free and different and an extraordinary woman. And then as we became friends, I realized more and more, you know, how different and how extraordinary she was. She used to just be more vivacious, uh, maybe more sensual, a little bit more comfortable with herself than most people in her day and still to this day are. We would go to parties and she would rock up in her Hawaiian grass skirt and beaded little bikini bra and she can do the Hawaiian hoop and roll her belly. And me and the two sisters were just hidden in embarrassment somewhere far away. <laughs> To be a single mother wasn't that common in those days. Her children grew up very differently, I think, as well. They grew up uh, much more freely. It wasn't a sort of cosy family place, you know, and she would be flying off here or sailing here. She was different. I think I tried to make my mom change because I didn't understand her and I wanted her to be different. I wanted her to be a mum. I didn't feel as if I was different because I was just being myself. Um, but when I look back on it, yes, I was very... I didn't toe the line. I've never been good at towing the line. I have this spirit that likes to explore. Leaving her marriage had been an enormous step for Pat. But now, as a woman making her own decisions, another leap beckoned to realize a lifelong and seemingly impossible dream. I've wanted to fly since I was six years old. We used to fly up to Namibia, where Dad had fishing factories, and that was an amazing thing. The pilot would say, would you like to come and fly? He let me actually fly the airplane. It was my first introduction to the joy that one can feel flying. I tentatively went to DF Milan Airport and I saw a carpenter and he was busy doing some woodwork. I said, I'm thinking of learning to fly. I mean, if I knew he was a flying instructor, I wouldn't have said that. I think I was far too scared of actually taking that, that plunge, that leap. To my surprise, he says, you just sign over here and we're going to see if you want to really go and fly. I was totally hooked on it. It was my first lesson. I didn't look back, actually. I renovated a house and I sold it and I bought another one that needed renovating and I used the profit to learn to fly. I remember going to Longa Barn and she had this small little wooden cabin. It was just full of books, full of her aviation notes and charts and maps. She was so inspired, it almost made her soul sing. She was radiant. I knew my mom and my dad would not appreciate it at all. So I swore my children to secrecy until I had a license in my hand. In those days, it really wasn't easy. Men didn't look at women and think, oh, yes, you can do what I, what I do. They didn't think like that. Why does she want to be a pilot, you know? She's a woman. There was very much that attitude. When I showed them the license, my father said, I would rather die than fly with you. And my mother shrieked and she said, who's going to look after your children when you're dead? <sighs> I thought, thank goodness, I never told them. I knew they would have stamped it out of me. Looking back at it, which I've really witnessed, is this journey of her struggle to be herself and, and seeing how that took shape for the first time when she started learning how to fly. I wanted to become a commercial pilot because it was the only way I could afford to carry on with my flying. I did get my commercial in record time and my flying instructor's rating and instrument rating. Growing up with my mum before four, things were good. But then her mum got sick and I went to boarding school and stayed in boarding school until I was about nine. I remember how much I missed her and how much I sometimes needed her advice, but she was away, flying in Angola, disappearing. 
So the cherished moments during that particular time was when we ourselves went flying up to Botswana or around the mountains. She would love flying up as fast as possible and then just dropping. And so you got the three daughters going, Wah! Wah! it was amazing. Look at this one with my mom. See, she's got a tiger moth helmet on. Can you believe it? She actually used to go fly. There's a, there's a, there's a moth behind her. You can see the biplane wings. Now that's me piloting, or about to pilot, a friend. You look so happy. I used to love flying that machine. Flying gave Pat a sense of freedom and pure expression. She was alive and living her dream. She wanted to learn to fly a tailwheel biplane, and when she saw a tiger moth, she fell in love and eventually bought it. A whole new adventure had begun. What does it feel like flying a tiger moth? Absolutely exhilarating. You're soaring up there with the birds, with the pelicans sometimes. You can use thermals to help you to go up. You can smell the farms. It is so vibrant. As you're flying over the mountains, you feel the presence of the mountains. You can go so low and you can hear the sea. We've flown over Wales before. It's magical. We used to take her through to save Oatshorn fly-ins and so on. And here I'm taking someone uh, for a flip over here. That's and Bronwyn, That's daughter. Bronwyn, yes. And she would help strap them in before we took off. It was so amazing, giving people so much in the way of thrills and excitement. She really did good when she decided to buy that plane. It gave her so much pleasure, so much joy, and gave other people so much pleasure and joy. One of the flights that I used to do regularly was the annual event of the Tigerberg Model Aircraft Show. It would come low over the trees and just appear. And unfortunately, that particular time, after a big storm had raged, they asked me please to come in more from the north, where I didn't know there was another set of high tension wires. And I didn't see these wires until the last second. And I pulled up to try and get through. And as I pulled up, one wheel caught. And we did a complete somersault around the wires. And fortunately, we landed on our belly. We didn't have too much damage to our bodies, but my head was smashed. I was black and blue on the right side, and my friend had his back injured. I did say, God, thank you for such a wonderful life. As I was going around, I was calm about it. It was quite extraordinary how calm I was. It's um, a wonderful space to be in, to know you can actually handle death without being freaked out or frightened. Evans has taken many leaps of faith and made some hard decisions to live her dreams. She's had the courage to leave an unhappy marriage, to learn to fly, and to live a life of personal expression despite what others think. Pat takes on challenges that most would not expect a woman to attempt. I bought this boat. She was a stinking, almost sinking wreck of a boat. And I put the deposit down before I had inspected the boat properly. I really thought that we would never, ever manage to get this boat sailing again. But we got stuck in. The guy who was helping me, Aubrey, was my right-hand man. He helped me to renovate this boat so that it was beautiful. Both of us, we were doing the dirty job. We were equal. Dirty hands, busy scraping. She was doing men's job. It was back-breaking work, but when the sea jade was complete, it gave Pat enormous pride, a sense of personal achievement and joy. 
I think living with somebody who is so driven and wants to do her own things, fix her own car, fix her own boat, fix her own plane, is intimidating. I don't necessarily think she understands that sometimes. Being in a place where you don't accept traditional roles as a woman, people always say there's a price to pay, and in a way there is, but I think it's not always a bad price that you pay. You do really gain independence, and I think it makes you stronger, and I think that Pat really is a very strong woman. It's made her strong. Pat had to draw on all of her strength when her eldest daughter became ill. For the first time in her life, she was confronted with something that she couldn't fix or change. This was one journey for which she was totally unprepared. One of the toughest parts of my life is my daughter who got cancer. Jackie got breast cancer and she died just over a year ago. So I'm still struggling to get over this. I'm definitely, I think, spiritually growing through the experience of the pain, of the suffering. Whether I'm sailing or walking on the beach, I feel that her spirit is with me now whenever it wishes to be. So what's life like for you now? At the moment, I'm very much involved with Mozambique. I have a little place, Mozambique Escape, I take guests, I teach them to sail, I teach them to kayak if they don't know how to kayak. It's just such a beautiful spot. It pulls me out and I get busy again whenever I'm in Mozambique. Being out in nature, alone with nature, you can feel your inmost, innermost feelings. I think it also makes you closest to, to God. Now God for me is love and I think acceptance. Have you accepted yourself? Yes, I have. Getting I there. really have. I think, I, think, I think that you don't ever really get there because there are always steps and leaps that you should take until your dying day. I really think you should try to continue to grow, mm. understand yourself, mm. yes. others. And you become more tolerant of yourself and others, more patient. Yes, one does. Mm. Yes. That's what I like about growing older.